Welcome back to the Serengeti. The team is heading out to the southern plains where the migration has come full circle. With life still far from normal in much of the world, the Serengeti is thriving. The wildebeest have lots of young, the plains are lush and teeming with life. Safari guides John B. Kivuyu and Richard Knocker, award-winning photographer Paul Joynson Hicks, and inspirational filmmaker Eliza Powell set off once more to take you into the thick of the action. We hope this helps to brighten your day and remind you that we're all still here, ready to welcome you back on safari as soon as you're ready to travel again. The rain in the Serengeti falls mainly on the plain, it turns out. Um, so it's been really, really wet the last couple of days, which is great from one point of view. It means all the wildebeest are headed this way. I think the plains are just going to be covered in animals any day now. Uh, but it does mean it's really difficult to get around. And we have to be careful where we go, because otherwise we're just going to leave the car there and sleep for a week. But the lake's full, there's flamingos everywhere. Um, everything's just green and gorgeous and fabulous out there. So off we go, go and see what we can find this morning. Preening is an incredibly important ritual for all birds, but it's particularly important for things like flamingos, which live in these soda lakes. Caustic soda crystals forming on their feathers can really damage them, so keeping your feathers in good order is a really vital part of the daily routine. Well, that's a great way to kick off the morning. We're straight out of camp, um, and here are these, our first lions of the safari, actually. This is the Lake Masek Pride, although today they're actually on the shores of Lake Ndutu, where they've been for the last couple of months. Um, great to see some cubs, and they're playing. The weather's been absolutely foul the last couple of days, so it looks to me like they're enjoying, uh, the sun's come out, um, they're feeling dry. It, look, it really looks as if they're enjoying life. Over here is a superb starling, which is a very beautiful bird. It's a very common bird uh, that you see here in the Serengeti, but it's very beautiful, bright, vibrant colors. And you can see here, he's, he's warming up, he's doing a little bit of preening, and uh, he's really enjoying this early morning sun. And, uh... <laughs> and also, Eliza's enjoying filming him because he's not moving. Exactly. Sometimes when you're in an open plain, you can see far away and all you're photographing a giraffe, then getting down nice and low gives you a completely different perspective and it gets the head out of the horizon, it breaks the horizon, it gives you a fantastic perspective. There you go. There you go, look at that. Oi, who's that getting in the way of my giraffe picture? Anybody? Hang on. It's Jombi! Jombi! Hey, Jombi! Jombi! Can you hear me? I don't think so. We better have coffee. Chardonnay. Chardonnay. Big time. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of Chardonnay. I've missed you guys. Look at that Chardonnay. That... This morning we saw the Masek pride of lions by Ndutu and they're very relaxed and very cool, very used to cars. But we got a tip off that the Twin Hills pride, which is much less used to people, was in this area. So we've come, we found them and it's really exciting because they're a little bit spooked by us. So we're being very cautious, can't get very close. 
but it's a real uh, it's a real accolade to the conservation work that's going on this in this area so protecting the lions but at the same time protecting the livestock of the Maasai that live in this area and just communicating so much better with the community so these guys being here is really fantastic so Paolo you know you were telling us about these really skittish lions yeah this is really <laughs> So, okay, so the truth be told, the females and the youngs are very unused to people, but this fella has come from the Ngorongoro crater. So that means he's seen a few people in his time. He is. He's going to be a good look at this. He's still quite young, but look at that mane already. As you can see, this is the spotted hyena, as opposed to the one we saw the other day, which is the striped, which is very rare to see. And this chap, lady, lady and gents, much more common. You see, several around here, aren't there, Paolo? There are, they're all over. And you can see how the youngsters really dark in colour. And when he was tiny? Completely black. Completely black. And super cute, aren't they? Yeah, I do. I think mean, jury's out on that one. Oh, come on. No, yeah. Okay, Ricardo's saying that baby hyenas are really cute, so you tell us what you think. All right, Ricardo, I got a feeling you've got the urge to tell us something. I do. <clears throat> Paolo, there's a thing I've been wondering about. Um, how do you how do you go about telling the sex of an ant? I don't know, Ricardo. How do you go about Well, I'm not sure. It? Okay, I'm not sure, but I suspect uh, you put them in water, okay? And if it sinks, it's a girl ant. Uh, but, of course, if it floats, it's buoyant. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's with huge thanks to Rob, who shared with us that with us last night. Brilliant. I love that one. That's Thank you, Rob. Terrible. <laughs>